Well, hello. We are finally leaving Plymouth after a night on the trots. Um, the weather's a little bit grim, as you can see behind Nina. But uh, how are we doing, Nina? Oh, fabulous. Well, I'm so glad we set off now. It's, it's all this work's just come off. So as we're going to go past, oops, uh, past uh, Mountbatten Breakwater, we're going to wave bye-bye to a couple of our friends and um, we're going to uh, just really enjoy a time of sailing around the UK with you, me, Nina. Where are you, Nina? I can't get you in the picture. There you go. And, um, and we're all aboard Vianna. Oh my goodness. How foggy is it, Nina? It's pretty bad. It's actually worse than it looks. We stuck our head out into the sound. It was clear and then the fog hatch came in and it was a very, very big patch. So uh, what are we doing? Abandoning ship. Well, we're not quite abandoning ship. We're abandoning uh, Voyage for the moment. And um, we're just going to disappear off into Yacht Haven, Plymouth and uh, see what happens. Maybe we'll set off tomorrow. Maybe not. <laughs> what a, well, it's all part of it. So finally, a day after we originally planned, we slipped the lines and made our way into the Plymouth Sound. Going past the familiar Mountbatten Ferry, which we wouldn't be seeing for another 62 days, we got the sails up and started to make our journey. We made it out into the open sea and our journey really was beginning. that come right up behind us and then just push us downhill, surfing away. Well, that little area that you can see just there, oh, in this rocky water, is Sulcum. But we're not going into Sulcum because we're doing all right, aren't we, honey? Reckon we've got it in us to go further? I think Dartmouth feels about right today. I just want to enjoy it, you know. We've been taking turns on helming. Uh, Nina's doing a great job at the moment. I've been quite relaxed doing it. But uh, I have to say, when I went downstairs earlier, I felt the motion of the ocean in my tummy. the white lights flashing well that a moment ago was the red flashing lights so it means we're in the right direction to go into Dartmouth at the moment so that's great never been into Dartmouth before Nina has have you yes yeah, 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 yeah. uh, so she knows what she's doing and she's been uh, giving me the navigational updates um, it's really exciting Well, here we are. We landed at um, Dartmouth. We're on the town jetty, which is really nice of uh, Dartmouth to have a town jetty like that. We could do with one of those in Plymouth, if anyone in Plymouth is watching. Um, oh, look how beautiful it is as well over the other side of the... Um, look at that. That's really quite fantastic. Uh, what can I tell you about today? Well, we've got here, we've put a few ropes on. And the best thing, actually, is that Nina 
has jumped to it. You can see I've still got my needs must. I'm hungry. I've still got my weatherproofing on, and Nina is busy making some pasta, something. <laughs> so um, we had a lovely sail, didn't we, darling? Yeah, it was lovely, but scary. Yeah, there were some very scary moments. I think with some of those big waves. We were surfing, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice place to arrive. I want to say thanks at the moment to uh, to Rob Buttress as well, who gave us this um, nautical almanac. Okay, so it's uh, a couple of years old right now. Um, but Rob actually used to edit for um, Reeds. This is Reeds, yeah, Reeds. And um, that was really great of him to give us that. We used that to come in here to Dartmouth. It was uh, really quite good. Um, just wonder whether this pontoon is locked or not. Let's go and have a little look at that. I'm going to take that as a no, it's not locked. All the COVID things are going on still as well at the moment. A little sign, do not enter the pontoon unless your vessel is ready for you to embark on. Um, and they've got lots of evidently tours going from here. But have a look at these lovely boats just as we bob down the pontoon. I think there's some uh, living aboard going on here. Particularly like this little vessel here. I'm not sure if it's all wood. Lovely looking boat. A nice garden as well. So as you can see, these are uh, well-attended pontoons, I think. I figure we might well be safe here tonight. There's my Emma. She's on the other side. <sighs> well, we've just finished a big day and um, had a great sail, really, really good sail. It's quite exciting. Um, and now we're here in a very safe harbour at Dartmouth, so having dinner. So we've got pesto and pasta. Yes, we do. Gluten-free pasta, of course, and pesto, and, and um, cheese. And it was very, very nice. We've got um, Portland Bill here, and we need to keep either close to the land there as we go past it, but not recommended in rough weather, so to go five miles apart. So we're going to have to come south of Portland Bill. These are really interesting here, the um, tidal streams for Lander. What we're doing is we're going to be heading with a favourable tide across most of Lander, and then hopefully we'll get to here before it turns around and is very unfavourable. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting with the autopilot on in the beautiful sunshine, enjoying ourselves and relaxing at an amazing 3.2 knots. Over there is the amazing Nina, and down here is a broken thing. Oh yes, and over there is the bimini that I fell against, and that also broke. So um, we're breaking things. Oh, and I've also ripped the zip on the stack pack. Yay! All things to be fixed later, but uh, we're doing all right. We're on a bit of a dead run right now. Well, we're not actually, we're on 120 uh, to the wind. And um, had the main and the jib up. We decided we'd put the main away because it was um, blanketing the jib and it just collapsed, kept collapsing. If you go slightly off course. So I put the main away, just use the jib and that's got a lot more power and it keeps going and there's a lot less flogging. Doing that we've lost about only half a knot so I'm not that worried, three and a half knots at the moment. Um, but this was a casualty of me falling 
and landing on the um, Dewberry. What is it? Bimini. So out comes the trusty needle and thread. I'm going to fix it. Right, my honey. What's the situation at the moment at, what time is it roughly? 6 p.m.? Um, we were doing really well. I mean, this is what we did in our first hour, second hour, third hour. Third. And then as we've got on now, this is what we've done in the last hour. So a little bit more than three miles, maybe. Yeah. But we want to get as clear of Portland Bill by five miles is the recommendation. Um, and we still want to get all the way over here. So it's at least 20 miles still to go if we're going to get to Lower Worth Cove today. So what should we do? At the moment we've got tide, oh, we're going that way at 2.7 knots. The tide is going that way at 2 knots. So we are making less than one mile in every hour. And with 20, hours, 20 miles to go, I mean that will change in about four or five hours. <laughs> um, should we put the engine on or what? Well, I think it might come to that. I Otherwise, we're going to be. You don't want it? Do I want to put the engine on? Burn fuel? Mm, no. Do I want to be safe in a harbour while in Glulworth Cove before dark? Yes. Decision. <laughs> a discussion was had. And a conclusion was made. It's not a bad thing though, it'll charge the batteries a bit. We're already up to three and a half knots from one and a half. Have you got any hot chocolate? No. Why have we got all hot chocolate? We've just a, done an a epic 13 hour adventure. Healthy. 14 hour adventure. We've got chamomile. Help us rest. I think I need it. 14 hour adventure. It's worth it though. We've seen sunshine and we've seen waves. And now we're in a very rocky cove. Look at this. But we're nicely at anchor. And I like that. We'll have a lovely look around here tomorrow at these cliffs. They're so beautiful. We might even have a little explore on the dinghy. Or a swim. Or who knows what. Um, gosh, what a day. 46 miles. 46 miles. That's 46 miles. It's not on anymore, I think. Turned it off. I must put the cover on. Well, good morning. It's absolutely stunning here. This is Lulworth Cove. Yes. Down in, um, oh, what, what county are we in? Dorset. Dorset. Lulworth Cove in Dorset. And um, we just woke up after a really rocky night, actually. It's been Really, really rocky all night. The anchor alarm went off three times just to warn me that we were rocking around and swinging. I'll show you that in a minute. Swinging on the um, on the anchor. This uh, little diamond, that's us at the moment. We're currently facing north. But you can see this is roughly where we put the anchor down. And then we were swinging a lot around here. Oops, still rocky on this boat. 
Um, and we've kind of done our little anchor dance around this area or throughout the night. But we haven't gone much further than 80 foot all around. So in the end I just turned the anchor alarm off because I clearly had it set for too short. Lovely little fishing village here in Dorset. There's already people up on the beach. I'm not entirely sure what time it is either at the moment, but we've just got up, had some breakfast. I think we'll stay here a little while this morning before we move on and head a little bit further around to uh, wherever we get to. We're just going to do an afternoon sail today. We're not going to push it as long as 14 hours like we did yesterday. Um, so stick with us, yeah. Lovely little place. Richard took this opportunity to fix some of the things that he broke yesterday in Lime Bay. Well, I don't imagine Versace is going to be ringing me up to do some of their needlework, but uh, it'll stop it ripping any further. And then it was anchors away to head back out to sea, but our adventure wasn't going to be as easy as we first planned. Well, we just had an exciting encounter, didn't we, sweetheart? Woo! Yes, lots of waves, leaving the cove, and then uh, we've got a military vessel came up, told us to move on. Yes. So this morning I did a little radio check with um, one of the, the Coast Guards, I can't remember which one answered, uh, Falmouth Coast Guard I think, and they informed me that today there was firing going on outside Lulworth Cove um, from 9pm tonight. Well it's now, what is it now, it's 14.15 at the moment. Here's Lulworth Cove there and you can see firing practice area. So I thought I'd check it out, but no, they're firing right now apparently, so the nice man in the nice boat radioed me and said, get out of the way. So our desired course to um, that marker, there was a mark there roughly, um, it's now been changed to, we are heading at 210 to completely clear the range. Here we are in the uh, almanac that tells us a little bit more about that range and um, we were heading to that point there but uh, we need to be heading all the way around this so this is going to be a little bit of a oops um, a detour but not too much of a problem but the wind is coming this way so we're going to have to motor into it for a while um, either that or sail right over here and then around and i don't want to do that but sail all around there is exactly what we had to do Nina had helmed a long time this day and so it was my turn to dish up the food that she'd prepared hours earlier in Mr D's hair box cooking finger me jig. Of course, serving food is usually a lot easier when you're not getting bounced about by the waves. Keep it in the bowl. <laughs> and after a much longer journey than we originally planned, which became a bit of a theme for the whole adventure, we made it around Old Harry and into Studland Bay. And then down goes the anchor. This rope is called a snubber, and that stops the chain jamming hard against the boat as we rock. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Studland Bay. We made it, we're alive. We made it, oh, we're alive. Day. I actually think I like big waves now. Oh my word. The waves were big, definitely. The surfing was amazing. The um, wind was strong. 4 6. We made it. Yes. Well, today um, has been a chill out day. It's now mid afternoon, I think, and we haven't gone anywhere. We've just happily sat on the anchor here at Studland Bay because um, we were tired. The last three days that we've been journeying have, uh, have taken it out of us a little bit, I think, and especially yesterday's high winds, high winds, strong waves making the boat surf. When we did let it here, it was what, nine o'clock at night and we were just glad to be able to get the anchor down and have a rest. So, a chill out day. And by chill out, I mean fixing things on the boat, but not actually sailing. 
I'm quite pleased with what I've managed to do today. I've fitted a hydrostatic unit onto the life raft. So if the boat goes down without us, um, then the life raft will pop up. Um, we've hung our waterproofs so that they can dry because they were sopping wet. Um, I've stitched the bimini again. Look at that, lovely. Well, almost. Um, what else have I done? I've just been fixing bits of electrical things that weren't quite working right and making connections good. And I fitted a few more camera positions, so hopefully you'll get a better experience of what we're doing. Rich has been fixing more of the boat and I've been doing some cooking and some other things I needed to do. Um, but we're planning now for tomorrow because tomorrow uh, the tide and stream is on our side. Yes, we are heading tomorrow off to, hopefully, all things considered, Gosport. And we're going to stay a night in a marina. Yeah. Um, just to fill up with water, get some diesel. We still don't know how many litres of diesel um, we use when we're running the engine per hour. So we need to get on top of that exactly. A um, few things just to check over. What's the weather? So it's on our side, but what's well, it actually saying? Well, the wind is... Force four to six. Uh, sea site, slight moderate. Weather is a bit rain uh, and pots, fog patches, that therefore making the visibility occasionally very poor. So we'll need to take our time, uh, yeah. ring our bell, all that yeah. stuff. All that stuff um, is blowing from the west as well, so it's going to blow us straight there, really, which is nice and easy. I'm very excited because we're going to go to the Solent, and I've never actually done the Solent. Sell the Solent. Sell the Solent. Yeah. We've got our charts here. Um, thank you to a few people who've given us um, their, their second-hand charts. Much appreciated. We also have the electronic charts as well. Um, Admiral, thank you for Portsmouth stuff. Torby, thank you for this whole portfolio of charts under there, which is this um, area. Almanacs and, and the almanacs everything. and everything. Thank you. thank you, Rob, for the almanacs. Um, we but couldn't yeah. do this without you. Look at that, we've been going got, for two minutes look now. This, look at this, we've got to manage all of those things. Ah! Yeah, so we're hopefully going to get to there tomorrow. You will see us at about and, oh, seven o'clock in the morning. And not finishing like the Mary Rose did. No, definitely not. All vessels over 150 metres in length in this precautionary area. There is a, a rate of 1.6 knots going past that point. Uh, let's say tomorrow, Thursday the 9th, high tide is at 4.36. The sea breaks violently over the shingles bank in the least swell. We need to be here. Gosport, we want to be 2.25. So next time you see us, I think it will be 7 o'clock in the morning. Are we up for that, Nina? <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> Well, good morning from what you can see is a very misty looking Studland Bay. It's, what time is it now? It's actually quarter to eight. So we're a little bit later than we wanted to be getting out. And um, it's, well, it's just too misty. So not sure yet whether we're going to depart. What I have done, um, just in case it clears up a bit and we risk it, is I've set up the G not the GPS, what's this, the radar, um, not quite turned it on yet, and I've also put up the mast there, a radar reflector, so we can see and be seen, we'll also be running with our running lights on if we do go. Um, when Moyana came to us, the radar was in fact on board, and the dome was at the top, I don't know if you can see, the dome up there was at the top of the mast, but the wires had just been cut and I assumed for a long time that they were just it was broken uh, somebody had cut it when they changed the mizzen mast in 2017 and um, I didn't do much about it and I was chatting with one fella who said well connect them up see what happens so I got the, all the wires out and started stripping them down and connecting them up and lo and behold the radar does work it turns out that the riggers that changed the mizzen mast were obviously uh, impatient and just thought well we'll get rid of this cable so I forget how many's in there probably about 13 separate cables including a coax so that took some time 
but I have radar and I'm very pleased about that. So uh, hopefully we won't have to use it today because it does suck a lot of energy out of the battery but uh, if I do then uh, if I need to then at least I'm a bit safer. And so as the mist remained we charged ourselves with some warming porridge and then made our way into the tranquillity and the beauty of nothingness. We really hope you've enjoyed joining us on our first episode of our trip around the UK. Hit the subscribe button to keep in touch and if you want to, please do join us on our Patreon. Thank you and see you next time.